Swift, having been around uh, Jerry and having been around a lot of different guys, then does that mean is the be- when 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 you're when you're putting a team together, what is your number one? Is your number one putting a coach like Pop together that's going to keep the players for a while, or is the number one getting a good GM? Is the number one getting a superstar like Giannis? What is the number one to keep uh, not necessarily the golden handcuffs, but to be able to get uh, a team that's willing to be in a market like San Antonio? which, you know, it's not necessarily the craziest set outside of the Three River Stadium and the Alamo. You got nothing really going on over there. I'm starting from day one. I want the best player because you need the best player to establish any kind of competitiveness and greatness. But if I want to start from scratch with this notion of what's most important, most important is committed ownership. So you need deep pocketed, passionate ownership that's in it for the right reason because over time that's what sustains things and wins and you want a good head on that guy's shoulders or gal whoever that owner is somebody that will then go hire good management so in your san antonio spurs example you had solid ownership that just got popovich and rc buford is this incredible tandem to lead basketball operations and to maintain this incredible level of success over the years, in spite of being in a small market. It was just, you know, 20 years of exceptional work there. Um, But there's no question it's a talent game. So in that scenario, if you're you're giving me for one year, the best owner, the best coach, or the best player, I'll take the best player. Who's the second? Second in that house. So go, go with that. Do your draft. Best owner, best GM, best player, best coach. If first is best player, what's second? If it's for one year, it's the best coach because he's going to have the most influence on performance. Okay, give me if you want to build a legacy, like if you want to build a 10-year run. So if you're first as player, what's your second? Well, if it's a 10-year run, I, I, it's still best owner. You got to have the best owner to give you the chance to make all those maneuvers and, you know, and to do all that. Then you got to have great management, you know, just build it. Really? Top got yeah. it. Okay. Got it. So Look, you're going, uh, you're going uh, owner, GM, coach, player. Owner, GM, player, coach. Owner. Okay. Got it. Interesting. Owner, GM, player, coach. And why is coach last for you? Because the coach is only as good as his players. I mean, you know, the great coaches pick the great talent to go coach. (laughs) That's how it works. (laughs) Um, Yes, there's this theory that you get an amazing coach and he's going to max out whatever talent he has, but that's only within a a small band of a small percentage. If, If you put Greg Popovich with the worst talent in the league, he may win them five more games so they go from 15 wins to 20 or 22 but he can't take a 15 win talent and tip make get it to 500 i wonder if he sees this if he'll be offended by that if he'll say come on you know i I take him into the playoffs even if you give me a bunch of scrubs i'm sure he would agree with you on that but so if that's the case who would you put right now as the best coaches in the nba Mm. best coaches in the nba well pop is still you know, over time, as good as it gets, just a, a master. What, what I look for in a coach is a master relationship expert and a tactician, you know, and a competitor and everything that goes with that. And, and Greg Popovich is just truly amazing. Um, Eric Spolster has quietly done just a remarkable job wow. over the years down in Miami. Uh, you know, a great guy, a very incredibly hard, incredible hard worker, managed that unusual transition to come in and succeed Pat Riley, who's one of the biggest personalities and most respected just NBA studs, you know, just a he's Pat's revered by so many folks for what he's done in so many different places and just kind of who he is. Um, and uh, Spolster has just done a remarkable job of uh, navigating through all that. So you put Spolstra as second behind uh, interesting. Well, I don't know. I don't have my list in front of me. There are plenty of others. He just jumped into my head. Yeah, I mean, listen, you, it's respect because even if you think about it, who the hell thought last year Miami was going to go to the finals and let alone win a couple? You yeah. know, nobody thought they were going to go that far, and that's a lot of credit for Spolstra. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview, and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.